I invited one of my favorite preachers, teachers in the world to speak today. I love listening to this person. They, they articulate the word in a way that makes me want to slap him in the face <laughs> because I'm like, how did you think of that? Um, he just impresses me every time he speaks and he's getting gooder and gooder every time he gets up and speaks. So today, would you welcome with me a son of this house, a spiritual son of mine, Pastor Josh Smith. Good morning, church. How are we all doing today? Good to hear. It's great to be back. So today, I want to tell you a story. It's story time today. And it's about a place called The Rock. Say it with me. Say, The Rock. The Rock. And The Rock is a place that I actually found on accident with my best friend, Rayvon. Hey, man. And what happened this day was we decided that we'd go to this place called Sam's Point to enjoy the sunset. It's a nice little hike, and then there's a nice mountaintop that you can see the Hudson Valley from. So me and Rayvon go to Sam's Point at 7 o'clock. And when did you know it? You can close a nature reserve. Now, how you close nature? Don't get me started. But anyways, we were there. It was 7. Well, we said, we got an hour till sunset. Let's find somewhere else to watch it. So we started driving around Ellenville, looking for somewhere to watch this sunset. There's this road called Mount Minhaga Road, and it goes all the way up this mountaintop. And as we're getting towards the top of Mount Minhaga, we look to our right, and there's this weird graveyard thing. And we look at each other, and we say, mm-mm, Jesus, and we just turn it around. We turn it around, and we go back down this hill. And as we're going down this hill, there's this big rock there. So he's like, all right, let's check out this rock, which we now call the rock. And as we go to this rock, we go off to the side to the right, and there's a little trail that you can go around. And as you climb up this rock and you look over the Hudson Valley, it is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the sun begin to dip below the mountains. From this place on the rock, you can see a huge portion of Hudson Valley. You can see all the trees. You can see the tiny little cars driving by. You can even see Ellenville off to your right side. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I can try to describe the rock with words all day long, but I want you to see this video that I took two weeks ago while I was at the rock. It is absolutely gorgeous there. So as I'm at this rock, I was like, you know what? And this was two weeks ago. I tell myself, I'm going to go enjoy the rock by myself. I'm going to go watch the sunset by myself. And it sounds like a great idea. I get to the rock. It's all nice and warm. I can hear the birds chirping in the sky. Chirp, 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 chirp. I can see little squirrels running across the rock, and I can also hear squirrels hopping from branch to branch in the trees behind me. Just a little, that little rustle, it is absolutely amazing. And on top of all that, like we just saw, I got to see the sun slowly drop below the mountain range, and it was absolutely beautiful. I was enjoying it. It was warm. Sun was shining. I had no troubles in the world. And then I get to this spot where the sunset ends, and this is when I would normally leave. The sun has dripped all the way below the mountains, and there's not much more to do. It's this thing, and you might have heard of it before. There's this thing called dusk. And here's the thing about dusk. When you're at dusk, and you're at home, it's fine. But when you're at dusk in nature, things begin to sound a little bit differently than they did before. You see, at dusk, the sun disappears. And those same birds that once sounded like chirp, 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 they now sound like this, chirp, chirp, Pastor Josh, what you doing in my hood? It's too late for you to be out here, chirp, chirp. And it begins to sound a little bit more scary. Those same squirrels that were so cute 30 minutes ago at this place called Dusk, they don't sound like squirrels hopping from branch to branch. 
They sound like bears climbing up a tree looking for a snack. And I happen to be a snack. And as I'm hearing these noises, I'm like, wow, um, I don't know about this whole nature thing. You know, I enjoyed the sunset. Maybe I can get up out of here. But I'm like, all right, let me stay a little bit more. And what did you know? Say this with me. Say, it gets worse. As I'm sitting there contemplating my life choices at this moment, it just so happens that bats began to fly over my head. There was bats from this way and this way and coming from behind me. And these bats, and now I know this is not true, but it's how I felt in the moment. When there was bats flying around me, I feel like somebody had a Pastor Josh voodoo doll and they was torturing me. They took a whole bunch of baseball bats and all types of bats and they put it on this voodoo doll and now there's a bat swarming over my head. And I'm like, oh boy, I might need to move from this position. You see, when I'm on the rock, I have this position that I never move from. There's a spot on the rock that it dips just right and I can sit there and enjoy the view. I would never ever move from that position as I'm enjoying the rock. And now, even though I was in the same exact position on the rock, I was, be- <coughs> excuse me. I was beginning to feel a little bit differently about my surroundings. As it was getting darker and darker, although I was in that position, things seemed to sound a lot differently. The squirrels were now bears and bobcats and mountain lions in my head. And at this point, my heart rate began to increase. My heart rate was like, boom, 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 don't die, don't die, don't die. And I began to sweat a little bit because I was getting a little bit nervous. And then I know what you're thinking, this sound made up. This sounds like a dream. No, this is a nightmare. (laughs) And as I kept going on in this nightmare, I heard somebody out in the distance singing loudly. Now, I don't watch scary movies because I don't like them. But I know that when somebody is singing loudly, that means it's time to go. Because from what I know about scary movies, there's two types of people. There's a person like, oh boy, Jeffrey, I heard a noise in the basement. Let's go check it out. That's not me. I'm the second person where you say, what was that? And you look over your shoulder and I'm in the car driving away. That's me. Yes, if that's you, give God a praise this morning. You know how to stay alive. So I get to this place where I am pretty much all but scared. And I was like, you know what? It's time for me to get up out of here. But then I said to myself, I said, no. Keep your position. Embrace this darkness. It's still warm. It's still a nice night. Do what you came out here to do. Enjoy nature. And as I said that to myself, I began to really think. I'm the type of person that likes to think, especially to think out loud. And I started with this question, why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling in this moment? Why am I afraid in this moment? Because I realized I was still sitting in the same position on the rock. I was still in the same spot, but now I'm feeling much differently than I did 30 minutes ago. And as I began to think about this, I took up my phone, and I began to think out loud. And as I was thinking, I arrived on the second question. Why do we fear darkness? Why do we as people fear darkness? And then as I was answering that question, I quickly realized that I was okay in that position as long as there was light. I was okay in my position as long as I could see what I wanted to see. The fact that I was sitting on the same rock in the same position did not matter to me anymore because what I could see wasn't agreeing with me. I was focused on everything else around me. I was focused on what's this noise? Is that this animal or that animal? What could go wrong in this moment? Who's that guy singing and why isn't he inside? All these things could pop up in my head. And I was now fixated. I was fixated on the darkness around me. 
I was fixated on what could possibly go wrong in this moment. And I tell you this whole story to illustrate a simple point today. That my position on the rock had not changed. But my perspective did change. My position where I was seated did not change at all. But my perspective did change based upon what? Based upon what I could see. Based upon what my eyes were telling me. And this is an important lesson for us to learn, especially as followers of Christ. Because we can fall into the same trap where we're trusting our perspective, we're trusting what we can see over our position on the rock. You see, Jesus is the rock. And today as we're talking, keep that in your mind. That when I'm talking about the rock, I'm talking about the rock of our salvation. And his name is Jesus Christ. So we have Jesus the rock and our perspective, what we can see. And I feel that as Christians, maybe sometimes we're content with our position as long as our perspective, what we can see, agrees with it. What does that look like? It looks like this. God is good. As long as my life is good. It looks like this. I know God is my provider. As long as I'm employed and I can earn money. It looks like this. God, I will trust you and I will follow you. As long as you let me choose where we're going on the GPS. It can be a whole bunch of things. I know God is my healer. As long as I'm healthy. We're now, we're putting more trust and faith in our perspective over our position on the rock. And maybe you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. With COVID going on and everything that's happening in our world, maybe you're at a point where your perspective looks pretty dark right now. Maybe you've been laid off of work and you're watching Congress fight over how we're going to keep paying people, and you're feeling a little bit of nervousness rise up. You feel like you're slipping into a moment called dusk, where the sun is beginning to set. And the same things that were always there sound a little bit different now. You've always heard the mortgage payment in the trees, but now it sounds a little bit different, because now it's dark. You've always heard daycare running along the floor, but now it sounds a little bit different because the sun is beginning to set and your heart rate is beginning to increase. And this could go for any area of our life where things seem dark, where when we're not seeing what we want to see, we begin to get nervous and we feel like the sun is beginning to set on us. Well, today as we shift, I want to ask you this question. Does your perspective determine your position? Or does your position determine your perspective? Am I putting more trust today in what I can see or in who I'm seated with, the rock that I'm seated with? Because that day I learned a lot about perspective and position sitting on that rock. Because I quickly realized that my position was not the issue. I was seated in the same exact spot the entire time. I realized that the issue I had to fight through was my perspective. And that's not easy. Because when you're battling your perspective, that's not an external battle. That's an internal battle. When you're battling your perspective, you have to look in the mirror for the answer. You can't look at other people as the issue. There's nobody left to blame. You see, I can't get mad at a squirrel for being a squirrel. Squirrels do what squirrels do. Are we mad at people for not acting like Jesus towards us 24-7? People are going to be people. And when I realize that squirrels are always going to be squirrels, what's that leave me with? The person in the mirror. I need to work on me at that point. 
And as I was thinking about this and how I would need to shift my perspective, as I was sitting that night, I realized something as I looked up at the stars. That in that moment when I was focused on all the darkness around me, that I was perfectly positioned to enjoy the most beautiful night I had ever seen in my life. I had never seen a night so beautiful. I had never seen a shooting star up until that point, and it bothered me. There were so many times when there was a shooting star, and everyone's like, look, a shooting star. And I'm like, huh? Where? And I'd always miss it. And guess what? If I had focused on all the noises around me, and only on what could go wrong, I would have missed the beauty of that night. Follow me here, church. Our position in Christ has not changed because of a pandemic. Our position on the rock has not been moved because a virus started going around. And if all we do is focus on the negative things in our life, we might miss the beauty of what God is doing in our lives. If all we're doing is focusing on the news to encourage us, you want a secret? You ain't going to be encouraged. (laughs) The news ain't going to do it for you. (laughs) But if you need some encouragement, I know this guy. goes by the name of Jesus. (laughs) This guy will encourage you so much. This guy will get you to do stuff you never, ever thought you could do. This guy is the greatest hype man. Girl, you look good today. You better go ahead and preach. You better go ahead and love your neighbor as yourself. This guy is pretty cool. And as we focus on Jesus, the one who can help us, we can see the great effects it has on our perspective. Here's what it says in Philippians 4. It says, don't worry about anything. I'm going to rewind and say that again. I think we can use that right now. Don't worry about anything anything. It didn't say some things. It said only worry about this small amount of things. It says don't worry about anything. Instead, so here's a better thing to do, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Then, everybody say then, Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Other translations say the peace that surpasses all understanding. It then says his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live, not as you think about, as you live in, I love that, I didn't realize that first service, you live in Christ Jesus. It didn't give an option if you want to. No, it's your position. You live in Christ Jesus. Let's break this down. The first part of this verse, we see this thing called worry, called anxiety, called fear. And what's the response? Prayer. When you're anxious about something, when you're worrying about something, your perspective is fixated on it. When you're praying... Your perspective is fixated on the one who can fix it. When you're praying, you're talking to the God over the circumstance instead of wallowing and focusing on the circumstance. And then when we talk to God and we shift our perspective, we experience a peace that doesn't even make sense. And then in verse 8 it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts. That's a whole sermon. Do you have broken thoughts today? Some thoughts that need working on? It says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely, admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. In other words, fix your eyes on the rock. In other words, fix your eyes on the things that you have with Jesus. These scriptures show us the power of perspective, the the power of focus. Because once again, as followers of Christ, our position is not our issue. Because our position is not rooted in an ever-changing world. 
Our position is rooted in a constant God, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, the Bible says we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. With who? Didn't he say he finished the work? And if he finished the work and he sat down, guess what? If we're seated with him, we're seated with the work that was already finished. Which is why in that verse, it doesn't say thank him for what he will do. It says thank him for what he's already done. We are seated in high places with him. We are redeemed. We are spiritual sons with an inheritance in Christ. You see, our position cannot be the issue because it's with Jesus. And if our position has already been taken care of, guess what we got to work on? Our perspective. We need to work on how we look at the world that we see. Here we see Paul tell us, the writer of the book of Philippians, he says, fix your thoughts or fix your perspective on things that are good. And maybe you're here today and you're saying, but yeah, that's cool for you, but there's absolutely nothing good in my life right now. There is nothing that is good for me in my life right now. If the statement there is nothing good in your life is true, then you don't know God because God is good. Even if you got to a point where you lost everything, where it feels like everything was down the drain, you can still shift your perspective and say, God, you are good and I have something that is good, so I'm going to keep on pressing forward. And when we live with this perspective of God's goodness, and we live our lives fixated on him, on what he says, when we place our confidence in the teachings and the sayings of Jesus Christ, we are now building our house, building our life on the rock. Like Pastor Mike taught us last week from the book of Matthew, quoting Jesus, when Jesus finishes the Sermon on the Mount, and he gets down and he says this, that they who hear these teachings of mine and apply them will be like a wise man who built their house on the rock. The storms and winds of life, COVID-19 came, but they were not shaken because they had built their house on the rock. When we apply God's word and we put our trust in his teachings, it does not matter what's going on outside of us. Because here's a little trick for life that I learned in a book I read. You can't control the world outside of yourself. So if you place all your energy into trying to fix something that you have no control over, you're wasting time when you could be fixing the one thing that you could work on, on you. And what I love about this idea of Jesus teaching a sermon on the mount and then getting down is saying that they're like a wise man who built their house on the rock is that this is something we see all throughout the Bible, that building your house on the rock isn't just an idea that Jesus brought about. This idea that God is not just a house or a room in the house that we build call life, but that God is the very foundation by which we build our lives. And as we look into the scriptures, we can see this. Now I'm going to need some help on this part. When I go like this, we're going to yell rock, all right? I'm going to read it, so let's practice. Rock. Now, I need, a, I need a little bit more. I need a little whoo. I need a little chirp, chirp, all right? Let's try that again. Rock. There it is. All right, here we go. 1 Samuel 2.2. 2. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no like our God. Deuteronomy 32.4. He is the His works are perfect and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. Psalm 18.2. The Lord is my my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my in whom I take refuge. Psalm 31.3, since you are my and my fortress for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Psalm 62.6, truly God is my and my salvation. 
He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Psalm 94, 22. But the Lord has become my fortress and my God the rock in whom I take refuge. If I hadn't made it clear today, we have this confidence that no matter what situation may come our way, no matter what issues we have in our life, we have this rock that will not be shaken. We can get to COVID-19, COVID-20, COVID-21, 22, 23, 24. It does not matter what may be going on because we have a rock. So today, as we close this out, I want to remind you of this journey that we went on. We followed a young man on a journey to see a sunset. This young man drove back down a mountain. He climbed up a rock and he found his position. And he forgot about his position because of his perspective, the things that he saw around him. And even though he was in that position, he didn't see all the beauty that was around him. But when he shifted his perspective and reminded himself of his position, it was then that he overcame his fear. This whole message, if you got nothing else from it, it's all about this one sentence right here. If you know your position, it will change your perspective. If you know your position on the rock, It'll change the way that you see life. When we start with our position in Christ, we can't help but change our perspective. I could be looking at one issue and somebody else has the same issue, but when I look at it through the lens of Jesus, I see a solution that they can't. And maybe you're wondering today, well, what is my position in Christ? In all love, I say Google it. Google it. If we were alive 200 years ago and we said, what's the Bible say about my position in Christ? I want every scripture. We'd have to read it cover to cover. And that's not easy. Today we can search what's my position in Christ. Boom. Before I'm done with this sermon, you can have every single scripture referring to it. And that's a beautiful thing. And maybe you're here and you're saying, yeah, I used to know my position or I know my position, but guess what? I walked away from it a long time ago. I know what God has called me to be and what he's called me to do, but I ran away from God as fast as I can. You don't know the things that I've done. You don't know the people that I've hurt. You don't know the people that have hurt me. Well, I wanna tell you something. That night when I was on the rock and looking at the stars and saw the shooting star, I had to walk away from my position to get back to my car. And it was kind of scary. I was good, chilling, and then I stepped on a branch and it's like, what's that? These thoughts, these negative thoughts began to creep back in. And maybe you feel like that's your life where you were doing all right in the position in Christ and now you began to wander and now you feel like the darkness is beginning to creep in. Well, there's this psalm written by David Shepherd, who then became a king. It's called Psalm 23. You might have heard it before. And he talks about his experience walking through darkness. He calls it the valley of the shadow of death, that place where it's scary. We're not at dusk anymore, we're at full nighttime, where it seems scariest. And what I love about this scripture is his response to being in that scary place. Psalm 23, 4 says this, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for the rock is with me. You see, maybe David was in that spot because he did something wrong. Maybe David walked away from the rock. How I was walking away from the rock that day. But here's the thing I love about the rock. 
even if I walk away from the rock, even if I left the rock, the rock never left me. The rock never abandoned me. And if you're here today and you've been sprinting as hard as you can away from Jesus, you know where he is when you fall down exhausted and you look up? He's like, I've been waiting here the whole time. I knew you were going to run away from me. So I took it upon myself to get ahead of you. Yeah, but Jesus, look at the trail of destruction I left. Yeah, but look at my grace on your life. <laughs> my grace is so much greater. If you're here today and you're discouraged by your past in a sense, or you feel like you've wasted time, I don't remind you that God is all-knowing. He knew the mistakes you're going to make, and guess what he did still? He called you. He still called you. He still wanted you on his team. And if you're on God's team, you have a role to play. And what better day to start than today? So if you're here today and you're struggling with maybe something that happened in your past or you're struggling with this idea that you ran away from God and you abandoned God, I want to pray for you today. Father, I come to you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for the hearts of everybody in this room. God, I thank you that in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of rough times, Lord, that we would be able to pray to shift our perspective from our issues and to focus on you. Lord, I pray that if anybody has a past that they're ashamed of, that they would realize that there is no shame in trusting you, that there is no shame in resting in you. Holy Spirit, I thank you that your peace that surpasses all understanding would fill this room, that we wouldn't be ashamed anymore, but that we would be affirmed by the words that you speak to us. And maybe you're a second type of person today who's here and you feel like, who's this rock? I want to know this rock. You went on a journey to see the sunset and the park was closed. You saw a graveyard. You went back down the hill and you arrived at church today or you're watching online today. Whether you saw it through somebody sharing it or you saw it because you came with somebody, I want to pray this prayer with you. And we call this the prayer of salvation. And what we do when we pray this prayer is if anybody believes for the first time that Jesus Christ is now their personal Lord and Savior, we celebrate you. And I want us all to pray this prayer together. It goes like this. Dear God, I come to you today just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I accept you now into my heart and into my life. I believe that you died and rose again for me. I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, did anybody pray that for the first time? Could you wave at me if there's anybody in the room that prayed that prayer for the first time? I see you. Welcome. Welcome. If you're watching online, where's online? Wherever y'all at? Right there. If you're watching online and you prayed that for the first time, click that raised hand button. We would love to connect with you in the chat. Pass the mic. Amen. <laughs> Told you he'd do all right. So my favorite takeaway today Hopefully you do takeaways. You write down something that spoke to you. My biggest takeaway today is squirrels going to do what squirrels do. That's it. That's all I got out of this whole sermon. Because I'm on vacation. So that's, that's the, point that I, the point that I love, he said, we have been perfectly positioned to enjoy the moment. And although our surroundings may look chaotic, the circumstances by which we're seated on the rock around us may have changed, but the position has not. I want to tell you today that we have been perfectly positioned to enjoy this life, even now. Even now, we've been perfectly positioned to enjoy life. But our eyes can be focused on too many of the uh, 
things around us. I wanna ask this question, it came to my mind first service because we talk about how per, um, circumstances don't change um, our perspective. But let me just ask you this. Would a million dollars deposited into, into your account right now change your perspective about your finances? Would a million dollars change your perspective about your bills, about your mortgage? It would, okay, it would, it definitely would. Even if you have your house paid off, a million dollars deposited into your bank account right now absolutely would change your perspective about how you lived. You wouldn't buy lower end clothes anymore. You'd buy a different kind of clothes. You'd buy a different kind of car because things change. The way you view money changed based upon something someone deposited for you to use. That's the position you have in Christ. That's the position. We don't, we, don't, we don't always believe it naturally, but spiritually the Bible says that God has deposited into all of us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's deposited all things. The issue a lot of times is what Pastor Josh was saying. He had to leave the rock to get back to his car. He had to, like that's, that's the issue. And we get this thing in our, in our minds that, you know, I, I've been foolish with my money, I've been foolish with my behavior, so I kinda just, I've been foolish with my health, so I kinda just deserve what's happening to me. So be it, if that's how you wanna live. If you wanna live that way, that's fine. But we could also go to God and say, Lord, forgive me for my foolishness, forgive me for being foolish with my money, Forgive me for being foolish with my health. Forgive me for being foolish with my marriage. Forgive me for being foolish with these things. Let your grace, because he says, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Let your grace flow into my life, into my situation. Father, I thank you from here forward. I will operate and walk with all wisdom and diligence. And I promise you, I promise you, things in your life will begin to change. They will begin to change. Amen. We're gonna close out today uh, by receiving the tithes and the offerings. Uh, I just wanna say thank you for being faithful to give into the building project. We were able to purchase the carpet squares and begin to install them ourselves. After service today, we're actually gonna move all the chairs forward and rip up the back carpet and finish laying the carpet squares uh, this week. So then this project will be wrapped up. Uh, but we are trying to do a lot of things right now. We're trying to kind of do some upgrades while we're not so busy. But we also believe that we need to be an answer to our community right now. I was driving uh, acro uh, across the campus here and I looked at our youth building and I said, man, there's a lot of people who don't have an answer for childcare come September. Um, we have a building sitting empty all week long maybe we could be an answer to our community and open a distance learning or a virtual learning building where parents could bring their kids in the morning, parents go to work. We make sure the kids' homework is done, play throughout the afternoon, and then when they get home, all their schoolwork is done and mom and dads have been able to go back to work. So we have, we have launched a website for that. It's vlcny.com, Virtual Learning Center New York, vlcny.com. Um, and we have two kind of systems going there. One is if you need care, if you need your child to be in a uh, virtual learning program, but also we have employment opportunities. We're trying to be an answer on that side uh, for volunteers, people who just want to come in and volunteer, but also paid positions where people want to come and be part of making sure that children's homework is done and taking them to the park and playing. Amen? Let's go and pray for the offering. Father, we thank you for an opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to be a part of what you're doing here in the Hudson Valley during this season. Lord, we thank you for the word that we heard from Pastor Josh. We thank you that it spoke to our hearts, that is planted on good ground, reaping a harvest in due season. As we leave here today, Lord, I bless everyone in the sound of my voice. They're the head and not the tail, above and never beneath. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Love you. Offering baskets are on your way out.